check it. Now that it is officially 2021, it seems like last year, every camera manufacturer tried to throw all their tech at the wall, and there were definitely a few trends we started to see popping up. The big one was RAW. It seemed like just about every camera had some flavor of RAW either being recorded internally or externally to an Atomos recorder. And the most popular of these RAWs being Blackmagic's B-RAW and Red's R3D RAW. And with the help of the affordable cameras such as the Pocket 6K and the Komodo, I think now it is the perfect time to break down which of these RAWs reign supreme. What's good creative fam? So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you are a filmmaker or videographer looking to elevate your videos using a raw codec. But it's important to remember that the entire purpose of raw, see, Raw video, just like in photography, gives you more detail from the sensor. But the only way to take advantage of this detail is through post-production. This is the reason why raw codecs are always shot in log. Out of camera, this is gonna look very desaturated and contrastless. But through the magic of editing, you can get more detail out of your camera and typically record higher resolutions in compressed raw formats for easier file management. Now, because this is raw sensor Data, some benefits from non-raw codecs, such as noise reduction, will not be applied to the footage, but still can be done in post. Also, it is typical for you to need a more fairly powerful editing machine in order to process the footage. This is the reason why having something like my system, the Dell Precision 5750 mobile working station, really comes in handy. This system will allow me to play back the raw 6K files I'm gonna actually show you later on, but I will, at the same time, allow me to do a screen recording. That way, everything that I'm doing, you guys are gonna be able to see it as I'm doing it. So shout out to the Dell Precision team for partnering with us just so we can actually make this video possible. But now let's jump into should you be choosing Red Raw or Black Magic Raw? When it comes to raw codecs, they're not all created equally. Take Black Magic Raw, for example. This is a codec that is only gonna be compatible in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. So if you use any other editor, you will not be able to access these files. This compared to Red's RAW, which can be used in just about every professional editing NLE, will make a big decision on whether or not this is the right codec for you and if or if you're able to or not able to actually work with this footage. Another massive difference is how these raw codecs actually work with your camera. See, for example, when working with a RED camera such as the Komodo, RED recommends exposing your image at ISO 800. Now, because of this, and this is being raw, this ISO number is not something that is actually locked into your image. However, this will give you the best dynamic range performance for your camera. Then in post, you'll have the ability to adjust your ISO to any value you see fit for your final image processing. This compared to the Black Magic RAW, which in the case of the Pocket 6K and 4K for sure, works very similarly, however, is slightly limited. When working with the pocket cameras, there is an ISO range cutoff when working in RAW. So for example, if you're using an ISO between the ranges of 100 and 1000 when capturing your RAW data, this is the only range you'll be able to make adjustments with in post. The same thing happens on the other side of that range. So when using ISO 1250 or higher, you will not be able to lower your ISO below that 1250. Now, this may not be a big deal for some, but it is important to understand how selecting the correct ISO range in camera is important and can assist you in the process of post-production. Now, in my personal experience with working with these two cameras, these two raw codecs, I have found that REDS produces a much flatter image. And this can be confirmed just by looking at the histograms. When I shot these two scenes, 
In order to ensure that the exposure was exactly the same, I connected them to the same monitor and I used false color in order to guarantee I was getting a comparable exposure. On top of that, I used the same lenses and then I used ND filters in order to get proper exposure. It's once you get these two codecs in your NLE, which in this case, I'm using DaVinci since it's compatible with both, where you are going to really be able to see how different they really are. Due to the 16 plus stops of dynamic range that the red is offering, I can clearly see how much more latitude I have in the image to make adjustments without the image getting overcorrected. It's clear to me that the red raw is definitely a more superior raw when comparing these two cameras side by side. But then again, we're talking about a $2,000 camera versus a $6,000 camera. Not to mention, do you even need raw? Both of these cameras are capable of capturing 4K ProRes HQ files. And I don't know if you've ever edited 10-bit ProRes files, but they edit smooth like butter. And this is the reason why for a large majority of my commercial projects, I've just been shooting them in ProRes. I actually have a friend who owns an Alexa Mini and he still shoots ProRes from that camera instead of the Alexa RAW because he says ProRes is enough. Let's go back to the point that I made earlier, and that is that RAW gives you the ability to make adjustments of RAW sensor data. Things such as ISO, white balance, and color spaces. However, if you do your due diligence to ensure that you're getting things right in camera, which I am guilty of making my fair share of mistakes, but if you get it right in camera and you're shooting in 4K or less, why do you need RAW? Also, do you really plan on spending the time in post to get your image really dialed in, which ultimately takes advantage of the RAW? Look, I get it. I personally bought the red Komodo because I wanted red raw, because I wanted to take the time to get every ounce of detail I could out of my footage. Even though I understand that most people will probably not appreciate it, but for me, it was important. And if you're in the same boat, then I say, get after it. It's worth it. But if you're not at that point, don't feel obligated to shoot raw just because you hear it being thrown around a lot. Because when the final version of the video is done, there will be no way for anyone to tell if your video was shot in raw or not. I want to say thank you again to the Dell Precision team for making this video possible with the help of their super powerful Precision 5750 workstation so I could play back these raw 6K files for you guys and edit them in real time while screen recording. If you're interested in this machine, be sure to check out the video I did on it. Uh, in the card above. Also, I'll have links down below in the description so that way you guys can find out more info about it. Also, if you have any questions on RAW or just video production in general, be sure to leave a comment and I'll either answer it there or address it in a future video. Click right over here or over here or one of these directions in order to check out another one of my videos that I know you're gonna love and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.